Good afternoon. We are in a new spot today. We are down in Smyrna, and you guys might be able to hear some of the traffic, but we are actually right by the covered bridge. I'm going to have Amy join us in just a minute. I am Krista McKay, uh, Collections Manager at the Marietta Museum of History. This is History Loves Company. Uh, let me give you a, sh a view of what I'm looking at, though, guys. Here you can see this. There it is. Covered bridge. If I could just have a chair and sit here and watch it all day. It's amazing. So yeah, there's the covered bridge. You can hear the cars going by. So, all right. So we are um, at a little spot right next to the covered bridge. This is actually the Henry Clay Ruff House, also known as the Miller's House. It's very confusing. But this is actually private property. I'll show you guys real quick. We are right at the end at a trailhead. So we are not going on the property. Um, any closer because we are right at the end, but there is the house right there and we've got some pictures and She's getting herself ready. There's Amy Hello. Hi. Okay, there you are. Well, there's me, but yes. I'm showing the sign because yeah. this uh, there's a couple historic markers This one is the Battle of R Ruff's Mill, which we'll talk about in a minute and the one that you guys saw um, over by the Covered bridge. Um, I'll post a picture of it, but it's it was put up for the bicentennial. It's a little bit different It's oh, not the same okay. It's not the yeah, same as one of these. Blue. It is it's bright blue. Bright blue. Like the house. The house is bright blue. Yes. All right, there we go. Hi. Hello, everybody. Good yes. to see you today. We are out. Um, what is this called when you go urban hiking? Like, I feel like I'm urban exploring. Urban exploration. Like urban is like right next to nature. It's great. So... We, yes, as Krista said over here, we are going to be covering today the Concord, the historic Concord, what is it called? The historic, <laughs> the historic Concord Woolen Mills? No. Oh, oh Concord co Covered, covered Bridge, Bridge Historic District. Okay. There we go. There yeah. are multiple historic sites within this one little area. And so we, um, we're going to highlight some of the different areas because I don't know if you're like me, but I actually have driven through the Concord Bridge once or twice. Yeah. I have. Um, but I never, it's one of those things you drive through and you like look real fast like, oh, look, there's an old house and oh, look, there's this. But at that same time, it's a single lane bridge. So you have to pay attention to where you're going. <laughs> so that um, while we've been standing here, which yes. has been about 15, 15, 20 minutes, one almost accident. Yeah. One. I bet it, I bet multiple accidents. No, no large trucks though. Not yet. We'll see if that happens. Not yet. Um, but yes, yeah, so... So the, the bridge, let's just get into it. This is a really historic part of Cobb County. And um, one that, again, I have never walked around. Krista has never walked mm -mm. around and explored And we've lived here practically our whole lives. So let's talk about the covered bridge a little bit. Um, I hope y'all can hear the sound. The thunk, the thunk, the thunk. <laughs> well, first off, that is a reconstruction of the original. I don't know how much of the original is there, if any other than foundation let me read what this says this book that I'm reading from is um, let me go on this side so you can no see no it. it'll be right oh it'll be right because you're so seeing confused. the re you're seeing the reflection okay Ar architecture archaeology and landscapes hey now oh, there you go resources for historic preservation in unincorporated Cobb County Georgia um, I don't know if you can buy this still. I don't know it, where it is, if it's published. The author is Darlene Roth, PhD. Mm, we did have a few for sale, but they sold. For sale what? Those books. We oh, had a couple copies, yes. but they sold. Yes. Um, and so, in this book, it highlights a lot of different historic sites around the county. It was also written, I think, in 86, 88. It's been, a, it's been a couple decades. 88. Yeah. yeah, 1988. So um, so it's a little dated, but the cool thing is you get some details here that might not be here anymore. So this says, central to the entire district is the Concord Covered Bridge itself. While the current bridge is largely a reconstruction and repair of the older structure, a bridge has stood on this site since the 1850s. Only the central pier of the present bridge is part of the early construction. That bridge was burned in the Civil War actions in 1864 and was replaced by a covered bridge in 1872. So I guess for six to eight years, they just had to swing across on a rope. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, was there a ferry <laughs> of some sort? Like I don't know. Um, what I mean, waterway is that bridge over? Oh, it's over Nickajack Creek. And really, it's not a river, so it's like a creek. So I don't think it's big enough for a ferry. I mean, it's maybe it's shallow small. enough. Like, they just walk. I don't know. 
Subsequent use has required reinforcement and reconstruction of the bridge to strengthen its load-bearing capacity. It belongs to Cobb County and is maintained by the County Department of Transportation. It is 133 feet long, 16 feet wide, and 13 feet high, with less than an 8-foot clearance. Even if seven you, foot. Oh, seven. Well, foot. that's what, what it says. says. Less, yeah, says. less than eight. Even if you haven't ever been over here, you have surely. I don't care how long you've lived in this area. If it's for more than say six months, you've seen on the news where another truck got stuck in the Concord Cover Bridge and jacked it up, and they have to constantly, you know. If there was anything that COVID really helped, it was the covered bridge. Yeah. Because <laughs> like there wasn't as much traffic, but um. I was gonna say the uh, the the most recent remodel was what 2018. I don't know. It's 2018, 2019. Yeah. yeah, something like that. The stone masonry supports are original. The concrete piers were added in 1965. The structure consists of queen post trusses. It is one of the 17 covered bridges remaining in Georgia in 1988. Eight. I don't know how many now. Ooh, that um, one was close. And is one of just two that embody the queen's the queen post truss. This bridge was included in the World Guide to Covered Bridges in 1972 oh. and published by the National Society for Preservation of Covered Bridges. The bridge is included on both the National and Cobb Register of Historic Places. So, um, this is a picture of kind of a side view of it. So you can kind of see, you know, the length as it crosses over the creek there. All right, it's all wooden all the way down. Um, what else does it say here in my notes? Um, yeah, so that's the covered bridge. The people are so close behind each other just oh, so they could get through the bridge. I found a treasure. <sighs> you know I find treasures. I don't know what it is. You can't but take look it. it. You can't take it. I was it just right walking here. right over here and here we go. Here's an artifact. Right here. Look at this. Watch, it's probably from like 1975, but I'm not that's, saying anything. It's old. Sure. Look here. All right, hold it up. It is square. Hold on, hold on, let me turn. Old. Well, it's it's kind of new because yeah, it is perfectly squared off. So that's you know, I don't know how old it is. New, old, you know, it's all relative. Leave it here, though. We have I no have right to take it. Here. It's some sort of a post. Maybe uh, it's to hold this wall up. I don't know. I don't know either. But anyways, I thought that was cool. So what we also did not say. Um, before we start it is how did we actually get here because obviously there's not really any parking so we parked up at one of the uh, spots for silver comet trail and if you walk through there um there is a historic trail through that that we have been walking on so very nice historic trail um but first let's walk over just walk across oh, over yeah. here to see the, the mill all right hold on guys i don't yeah. want to like do that there we go so yeah there's they're a little gate, but yeah, so this is private property to our other side, and so you cannot go into the mill that's here. Can you see it though? Look at that. I'll zoom in in just a minute. Let me get a little bit better. If I can, I don't know if I can. Oh, I can. Look at that. Yes. So it's now, right it's my understanding that the workings are not inside it anymore. No, I, I read that too. But let me pull up my notes here while y'all look at the scenery. Just keep it there. I'm just me. moving around so they can get angles. Can me? Okay. Angles. Ruff's Mill. So this is Ruff's Mill, and it was a grist mill, so that's grain. Flour, yeah. Flour. Remember okay. we discussed this I one know. time. It's not grits. I know. It's grist. Grist. It's, uh, let's see, it is on the same peninsula containing the miller's house, which, which yep, yep, we just saw that. Mm -hmm. It was built around 1850. It was later operated by As Asbury Martin. It was known as Martin Feed and Grain. There are no millworks left inside the structure. It is included on the National and Cobb Register of Historic Places. It was built by Henry, um, Henry, Henry Ruff. Henry Clay Ruff. Henry Clay Ruff. And then his house, which we just saw a minute ago, that blue house, I'll tell you about that. The Miller's house is also listed. Uh, it's located centrally on the peninsula. Let's see. This two-story frame structure of simple design with Victorian alterations was built around 1850. This structure appears to predate Ruff's ownership of the property. Original portions of the house can be seen in the heavy timber frame of hand hewn, hewn? Hone, hewn. Hewn? Hewn. beam resting on fieldstone foundations. The two end chimneys are constructed with fieldstone bases and brick stacks. The grounds feature terraces, walks, fieldstone retaining walls, a concrete swimming pool, 
and what? other formal landscape elements. These improvements were added in the 1930s, 30s. by owner of the property, Dr. Clinton Reed. The landscaping plan was designed by William C. Pauley, a noted landscape architect. Is um, uh, Dr. Reed a relation? No, unfortunately. You sure about that? Let me give you guys one more look at that house before we, um, yeah, I'll come over to you in a second, but, um, cause again, it's private property. You can see the house right there. It's back there, right there. It's got a little veranda at the top. It's kind of hard to see, or not at the top, but the second floor. So I'll show you some pictures in just a second. Walk back over. There's the mill though. You see how close it is though. It's a little gravelly right here. Watch my stick treasure. Okay, yeah, that's okay. wonderful. Here is a image of the house. Um, I don't see a year on it. You want to um, turn of the century? Yeah. The early 1900s. Uh, the second one I think is 1980. Oh, okay. But I, I, yeah. I remember that. 1980. Oops. Hold on. She doesn't do this like it. There you there go. You go. So, yeah, it's still got the little veranda, but it's got definitely got more trees around it. Mm -hmm. So, and then you guys kind of saw what it is. But yeah, so this is the mill. We're gonna um, get ready. We're gonna go to our next stop. We're not gonna film this whole. Can you see the creek right here though? Come look at the creek. The creek. Right? The creek. Let me find the creek. Because if you have a mill, you need water. That's true. Here, let's see. Let's go down a little bit this way, guys. So yeah, I'm not gonna film while we uh, this whole walkway because there, <laughs> some of these tree roots are. Oh, there it is. You see it? Look, look at how pretty that is. There it is. Look at that, guys. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's very Let's clear. Try it this way, for the milk. You guys hear her trying to tell me how to I'm be the cinema director. <sighs> Screw that today. Whatever. <laughs> so listen yeah, to your mill, cinematographer. I bet the ruins of the mill wheel are in the water. That'd be my guess. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. All right, so we're gonna walk to. What are we walking to now? The uh, back to the Concord. Card, the, Concord Woolen Mills. So yeah, they've got some ruins back here too. If you've ever been to Sweetwater, it kind of, it gives me that vibe. So we're gonna walk over to yes. there. So you guys will see us in half a second. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, so it was like a five minute walk from the bridge to the ruins that we're at now. Yeah. It's yeah. very, I mean. Very easy walk. Yeah, there's a lot of tree roots, but um, it's, it's, True. it is footpath only. There's no bikes no strollers mm -hmm. it's a little yeah. narrow so if you have a kiddo it's on the on backpack or they got to walk themselves mm -hmm. and there's a couple of spots that are a little bit of a drop but uh it's i didn't feel beautiful yeah i yeah i was fine for me so yes. i didn't have a problem I think you could do it so we are inside a building right now if you can a believe that shell of a building if you can believe that we are standing inside a mill Hold on, let me show you a scene. And we are not there's, oh, trespassing because I didn't see any signs that say don't mm -hmm. trespass. <laughs> you can't walk well, No, the way. pathway literally goes to it. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't. It does. It does. So, it's pretty cool. Um, we are in the Concord. Oh, crap. Woolen, Woolen Mills. Mills. Yes. Concord Woolen Mills and Mill Workers Village, this area. And um, what we have, there's a pretty good amount of ruins left. But what they did is they've. Um, supported it with these beams that are kind of in the shape of to give you an idea of the outline of what it would have originally been oh, I'll move out because oh, we're kind of towards the edge here so yeah. standing in the middle and it's almost like two sides so you got this one side what did they call it they called it like a ghost structure yes that it is. give you an idea of the size of what it how big it was and I'm standing kind of in a low point yes. so I'm, I'm kind of down we're in the basement Right, we're in the low, but you can see the window, or uh, what would have been the windows? Three stories, I'm guessing? Yes, three um, stories. Three stories? Mm-hmm. Um, With potentially a attic area, too. I don't know I if guess. we that or not. But um, we kind of walked in from this way right here. Um, there is some graffiti. Don't worry, everybody. The uh, mills are safe. Somebody left their mask here, so they're COVID protected. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that earlier. But... What you can't see, and I don't think you guys can hear it, but through this little, like, I'll call it a thicket. Let's call it a yes, thicket. Yes, it is a thicket. Um, is the creek. The creek is back there. Nick and Jack is back there. But um, you really can't see it from here. You can see it when we walk out a little bit. I'll show it to you guys in a minute. But um, so Beautiful sight. 
So again, let's take a look at this architecture in archaeology book um, about Cobb County. The Concord Willow Mills and Mill Workers Village. Village. It, the ruins consist of a three-story shell, a field stone with framed windows and door openings. The facades of the structure are in various stages of deterioration, and in some places the building is only one story tall. Again, remember this was in 1988. Mm -hmm. There is no roof, and trees grow in the interior spaces. So they have really cleared it out. You can tell they cleared it out recently, too, Yeah. Um, so that you can get in here safely without snakes and all of that. Um, the Annabellum factory, built by Robert Daniel and Martin Ruff Sr., was burned during the Civil War. It was rebuilt by 1869 and burned again in 1889. A third structure was completed in the 1890s and operated until about 1912. The sign up above, they do have uh, an interpretive sign that tells a lot of history about it and excerpts from newspapers mm -hmm. about it. Um, this, that sign said 1916, so somewhere in that that area. Uh, until about 1912, when new technology rendered the mills obsolete and the mills closed. There has been little effort at preservation of the site since then. Now, this was in 88, but there yeah. has been a lot of effort to preserve it, I would say. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, since then. Just building of the structure yeah. alone. Well, and, and you know, there's a... Well, we, did we mention the group? The group that um, supports them? There the, is a friends group. Yeah, because well, it's a part of the Concord... Or the Covered Bridge Historic District. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is a group and there's a website, Historic Concord no. Covered Bridge. Covered Bridge Historic District dot org. I think that's go. right. And they can give you all kinds of information. We'll put a link. They they maintain the trail, I think the historic trail. There's even an app with an audio tour. So it's really well preserved. Um I want an app with not audio, but like yes. <laughs> like the we pictures. Had, we had an app. No, but I want them to have one. Like, oh, I don't them. care about oh, yeah, us yeah. right at this oh, moment. Okay. I know you did work yes. on an app. I'm not, I know. no, no. The problem is maintaining it. <laughs> I know, Updating I know. Updating it. All right, so um, just north of the mill, there are ruins of an accessory building and also a small mill village said to be one of the earliest in the state. Now, we'll, I'll walk up there in a mm -hmm. minute to the, yeah. uh, they call it accessory building. I think the sign up above said superintendent. Yeah, that's House. what I thought. Local residents describe a number of old well sites, springs, and former building sites in this area. There was a superintendent's house, and there may have been a railroad siding as well. I still can't tell where the railroad is. I keep wondering. I, we I have to pull out a no map. Idea. It's around here somewhere. But it's obviously not the W&A line, which is now no. a CSX line. It's yeah. probably the um, Norfolk Southern Maybe. Line I don't know. We'll have to look. West. Huh? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Really. Um, so that's. Let's see if I can show. Is Here's a chimney. Somewhere there was a chimney from a mill worker's uh -huh, cottage. Hold on. A chimney. Chimney somewhere in the woods. I don't know if we can find that. And I'm surprised she hasn't gone off and tried to. I did. Look. Did you do that a minute ago while we separated? I was looking. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, after the war, the mill was sold in 1872 to a group of Atlanta businessmen: Zachary A. Rice, James H. Porter, and S. B. Love. It is from Zachary A. Rice that John Rice came into ownership of the Woolen Mills. The last owner of the working mills was Annie Gillespie Johnson. She also owned the Rock House, which was Gilles over by the bridge. Gillespie. Gillespie? Gillespie. It's not Gillespie? No, it's Gillespie. Gillespie. Okay. Potato, potato. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and her son lived there. She was from New York City. Well, just New York. I don't know if it's a city. And was married in 1876 to J. Lindsay Johnson, a native Georgian who was a lawyer in Rome, a planter, a state legislator in the 1880s, and after 1903, publisher of the Rome Tribune. Mm -hmm. He was also U.S. Census Bureau chief in the Philippines in 1914. Random. After his death, Mrs. Johnson ran the newspaper. In 1910, she attempted to make arrangements for establishing a colony of Russian Jews in the Mill Village. So that's some Jewish history here. This unsuccessful effort made her one of the few Georgians to evidence an interest in immigrant problems of the era. 1910, she's trying to bring I know, Jews I just to the area. That's interesting. That's pre... But I guess it's pogroms during pogroms. So, yeah. So... But, yeah. But it's, it's also... Um, not too long before uh, Leo Frank issues. Yes, no, that's true. Yeah. When anti-Semitism really hits ahead mm -hmm. um, in this area, especially. So um, she's trying to go against that force. Oh, yeah. Um, which is great. Good for her. 
Um, she was the founder of the Georgia Federation of Women's Clubs from 1897 to 1901. She served as the Federation's second statewide president. The Mill Ruins and the Mill Village are not listed on the National Register, but are included in the Cobb Register. So, um, these, yeah, yeah this, is, this is great. Um, so, we've got some women's history. We've got some Jewish history involved here. So, um, do you want to go also, over towards that other building? Do you want the... Yeah, we can go look at that. Because that way you sure. guys can see it. And also you could kind of see where the creek is because... Yeah. And I can talk about the Civil War. This is also a battlefield area. So, we can talk about that. I let her research that part, not me. Yeah. yeah. All right, All so right. let's turn the camera okay. so they can see. I'll oh. get you back. You go. <sighs> she's, I'll carry you. She's going to carry my cat... Workhorse. She's going to carry my cat bag for me. I had to bring out the big guns for this yes. for this one. Usually I just have a small bag. But this, this time around, we had to bring out the big backpack. All right. I will say this, though, too. It definitely looks like they have cleared out during the um, recently and gotten rid of a lot of the underbrush, which has caused some of the uh, bugs to come out. And then Amy and I think this might be like a leading step. There's something about this that yeah. gives me the impression. When you walk through, I'll yeah. turn back around. But I don't, I don't think it's a millstone. I think it's like an entrance stone, though. Like... Oh, well, maybe. See, yeah, it's definitely it's a step. Down. There's something about it that's maybe a little. A hole there. Maybe, but like this whole area here has been cleared out, which we appreciate greatly, because it's like they knew we were coming. Yes. You see the water over there? Yes, I took a 15-second video of calm of the little Nickajack Creek over here. So yeah, it is right down over this way. I'm glad we didn't pick a muddy day to be out here because mm -hmm. that would have been awful. Awful, awful, awful. There it is. On a day like Beautiful. today, put your feet in the water. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You might have to do that. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, go. it's up the hill. Yes. It's up the hill. Up here. Am I supposed to walk up there? Is that the plan? I can do it either way. I didn't, wasn't sure if I could like walk in there, but I guess I can. Yeah. Sure. Now it is. But yeah, so it, it's got that same um, ghost structure that. Stone. Yep. Created, built with stone. Now this one's got a little bit more power in it with the concrete yeah and this was what they called the superintendent's house right yes i think that's what that sign said we did read so, the interpretive panels but you know i'll walk in a little bit but yeah this is a nice little now this one doesn't seem to well you can kind of tell okay this wall, you can kind of tell where the floor supports oh, probably yeah. would have been. You, if you guys well, see that hole. there's another threshold right over there. That's the yeah. second story threshold over there. Okay. Um, you can see it's, yeah, right in there. Yeah. And so we came in the first floor and then mm. you could put kind of second floor. Yeah, and you can kind of see well. where those are. So. But yeah. Gorgeous. Yes, very cool. Very cool. So, all right, do you want to talk about? Oh, the Civil War, yes. Oh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> Literally. You know, there was a little thing that happened the, around here. The, the creek distracted her. She didn't remember that she's going to talk about the Civil like, War. What? Okay, so okay. most people obviously know um, Cobb County had the Civil War, but really they think about Kennesaw Mountain. Right. But there were other, this one was deemed a battle. The Ruffs not a, Not a skirmish. Yeah, it was a big so, deal. It was a big deal around here. Um, oh, actually, so, hold on. Before you say that. Yeah. We didn't mention... Okay, so it's a woolen mill. Mm, yes. But what actually did they make? Cl cloth. <laughs> Jeans. Jeans. Denim. They made yes. denim. So they wanted the wool from the sheep and stuff, and then they would make heavy denim. So... Okay. If yes. anybody has a pair of Concord Woolen Mill mm, denim that would jeans cool. or, or something, let us know. Yes, that would be very cool. Okay. So Absolutely. Now, Civil War. Sorry. Okay. So, um, this site, okay, and this is coming off of Crossroads of Conflict, A Guide to Civil War Sites in Georgia. 
and right there it is by Barry L. Brown and Gordon R. Elwell and they went around this was during the sesquicentennial oh boy Se Ses it's been a while since I've had to say I know. sesquicentennial celebration in 2014 yes yes that's the 150th anniversary of the Civil War yes and battles around um, Atlanta yeah and so they create but this is for the whole state of Georgia um, they created this beautiful full color book about Civil War sites and um, our museum is in it too mm. ding, ding. Um, this is Battle of Ruffs Mill Concord Covered Bridge Historic District and Gand House this site includes the ruins of Ruffs Mill which we saw okay uh, the the Miller's house we saw mm -hmm. Concord Woolen Mill we saw mm -hmm. the 1854 Gann house we haven't seen so that a is a mile to the west yeah that's not on the walking trail and it's also a private residence but it's not okay. I don't think it's on our walking trail okay the first federal assault assault on July 4th 1864 which occurred at the Smyrna campground near the railroad okay now Smyrna campground I don't remember where that was it, well, it's anyway, near the railroad. Well, it's near the railroad. That's, that narrows it down. Mm -hmm. um, it, that first federal assault was unsuccessful. However, the second attack a few miles to the west, approaching Old Concord Road, succeeded after softening Confederate resolve with a furious shelling. Brigadier General John Fuller's brigade of Major General Grenville Dodge's, this is Roman numerals, 16th Corps, drove in the Confederate skirmish line of Major General Carter Stevenson's division from the vicinity of Ruff's Mill to their main battle line near the present-day intersection of Old Concord Road at Gann Cemetery. So that's a little, it's not too far from here, about two miles from here. Yeah, we, we did find Gann Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, we, we, we couldn't go in there. Sorry. It was locked. We'll Dang get in it. there. We'll get in there. But, um... Maybe. They didn't have Maybe. a sign, though. We don't know how to get in. I'll um, figure it out. We'll figure it out. Among the casualties during this action was future Ohio Governor Edward F. Noyes, who sustained a wound to his left foot, which was amputated later that month at a Chattanooga hospital. I wonder if it's buried at a Chattanooga cemetery. I don't know. Like the foot that was in ours and the arm that's in a Rome one. Leg. It's a leg. whole leg. Dang it. There's two legs in our. Get it right. There's two legs in our city cemetery. I'm just gonna say a pivot from now a, on. Two. I should c c clarify. There's more than two legs in our city cemetery, but there are two legs <laughs> yes, amputated are separately, <laughs> buried separately from their owner. I should have. Have I seen the second one? Um. Uh. I. I have not. This is gonna sound weird. I have not visited it. Yet well, I that's just sad. I, we need to well, visit it I, on our next yeah, trip. Yeah, I know okay. it's in the newer section. Hey, legs, arms, feet, hands. I all visit. Important. I visit all the legs, hands, and arms there. Okay. <laughs> the actual battle site has been developed with private homes and businesses. Shocking. Mm. Of greater interest is a visit to the Concord Covered Bridge. It was mm. built in 1848. We talked already about that. talked about that. Um, the Federals burned the woolen mill, which made cloth for Confederate uniforms. Mm. Which was not jeans, so the jeans came no. later. Because actually, I think jeans as a whole, like as a invention, was post-war, right? No. Levi Strauss? No. Before the war? Yes. Okay. Gold mining in California. But you got to remember, heavy denim, mm -hmm. denim is a product that isn't always, when I mean, we associate with jeans, mm -hmm. but you could also think of heavy canvas, too. Oh, okay. So, um, okay. so yeah, that's what we're thinking. But no, um, jeans itself came... Levi Strauss, I believe it says it on the label what year? I want to say oh, 1848. Yeah. Mm. So that's Heinz. 57. <laughs> Different brand. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, circling back to Ruff's Mill battle. <laughs> um, let's see. So the Confederate, they burn here oh, because oh, they this were is important. It says public parking is not available, except now it is. If you park on the Silver Comet Trail site and walk. where we were in yes. Walk, yes. Um, Cobb, Cobb County acquired ownership of the ruins and uh, to preserve them and walking trails, all that. That's about what it says. So that gives you a brief, a very brief 
tidbit of the battle here. Now, I'm sure we could do a whole program just on the Battle of Ruff's Mill if we found a military historian in the area, which mm -hmm. we have gobs of. Yes. And so if you are interested in that history, um, reach out to us at the museum and we can put you in touch with somebody who can probably um, give you more information on that. Kennesaw Mountain Battlefield might be one. <laughs> Battlefield might be one. Um, or Mike Schaefer at KSU, mm -hmm. a part of the Ollie um, mm -hmm. program. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So we've talked... Did I miss a spot? We didn't miss a spot, right? We did. No, just the, bridge. the cemetery, which. Well, we might. Well, no, the rough cemetery. Yeah, we're gonna try to go to that, and we'll see if we can go to that. Um, if we can't, you'll see a video of sad faces in the car. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> wrapping all of this up. So last uh, stop, we're gonna leave here after we put our feet in the water. You can do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And. We're going to find the cemetery. Find the cemetery. We're going to find it no matter what. Oh, well, yeah. That's but true. the question is can we go in it? Don't know. So we'll find out. Stay tuned. Half a second. You'll find out. Hey, <sighs> look. We're in a cemetery. Not the right one. No, not the right one. So the rough family burying ground is literally like, I don't even think, a mile from the covered bridge. Yeah. Like if you're, what, which, which way were we going? East? Northeast? Sure. I don't know. <laughs> we, we, uh, we drove away back towards Marietta from the covered bridge. And it is going that direction. We saw a sign for it, mm -hmm. a sign dedicated to, this is a historic cemetery, rough family cemetery. But unfortunately, the only way to get back to it is go on private property. Private, yeah. There were two private drives, you know. In another day and age, maybe somebody would have driven up there, knocked on the door, and said, Hey, can I take a look at the cemetery? But I don't know that we were prepared to do that. I today, wasn't so. prepared to do yeah. it. So I think um, we'll work with, hopefully contact the Covered Bridge Historic District Group, because they have done stuff out there. Yeah. See if we can get out there. And and, and also, it looked kind of overgrown, so maybe <laughs> tap it down. So, um, but yeah, we are actually in the Marietta City Cemetery. Um, we're going to film something else for a later date. But um, thank you guys for joining us on our little journey at Ruff's Mill. And the Concord Cover Bridge Historic Site. Yes. Got dis it. Dis district. District. Dang it. Con Goodness. Covered Bridge Historic <laughs> District. God, so in close. Smyrna. It was, you know what? It wasn't what we were planning but it, we still made it work. It was great. We still I loved found, it. We still found a historic site that neither of us had ever visited mm -mm. and didn't know the full history of. So there yeah. we go. We so all learned something today. We all learned something. And we would highly suggest going down there and going oh, on the Silver absolutely. Comet Trail and walking. We didn't walk, yes. the, obviously, it goes all the way to Alabama. We didn't have time for that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, walk a little bit. You know what it. else I meant to point out? No. Maybe I jinxed us. Because I wore my skeleton earring specifically for today because I thought we were going to be at a cemetery. That's all right. I wore my and haunted mansion hat too. I know. And all three cemeteries, <laughs> new cemeteries we tried to go to today, we struck out. They were yeah. all locked up or on private property. So, at least we know now. That's okay. You know? We'll get there. We just, you know, got to make the right mm -hmm. calls and we'll get there. But, so yeah. So, we will see you guys next week with another edition of either History Loves Companies or Tombstone Tourism Tour 2021. Yep. I don't know. Which, whatever. So, bye, guys. Bye.